welcome to a, another episode of Time with Flora. My name is Flora and welcome to my show. So today on this episode I have a very special guest with me. Uh, Ken is a wealth facilitator and I'll let him tell you a bit more about what that means. Uh, Ken is somebody that I've known for a number of years and um, I first Ken read an article that you wrote in, I think it was The Guardian or, uh, business, day, or uh, business, business Day, and you were talking about treasure bills. And, um, um, treasure yes, bills. that's right, and, and that was how I connected with you. I, I got your email address and uh, we've been friends ever since. Thanks, I, yeah. I, I loved your, your passion and, 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 and how you talked about building wealth and the fact that you don't even come from a finance background but this is just somewhere something it's a topic it's a subject that you just have an innate uh, uh, ability to talk about that you're very passionate about that you're very passionate about the idea that everybody should understand you know this and if you're if you're if you're wanting to really take advantage of and and create wealth then um, you're, you're happy to have a conversation with them. So um, really delighted to have you on the show with me today. Thank you and so um, you know, share, share your initial thoughts um, with my guests or my audience. And looking forward to having you come along and talk about other topics as well, under the whole uh, money, uh, money talk theme. Uh, Ken actually has a website, uh, moneytalkng. Dot com yes. and he also runs a blog and I, I think you've got some things um, other articles and so on that you've written as well so definitely there'll be an opportunity to check that out but um, you know you can talk more about that later so Ken let me hand over to you give you the opportunity to okay. tell people about what a wealth facilitator is and what what it is that has brought you into this space to talk so passionately about people creating wealth and having multiple um, multiple streams of income and so on. Well, thank you so much, Flora. Yeah. Basically, a wealth facilitator is just using big grammar to say I just want to help people achieve their financial dreams and goals. Um, if you look around, 99% 90, of people's problems are financial. People want to have enough money to take care of their loved ones, to travel, to achieve their wildest imaginations possible. And the only way they can do that is if they understand how wealth is created. So, Ken, why aren't we all millionaires then? I think the right response to that would be to start by saying we should be able to have more millionaires. So it's more, not more, all. Not all. <laughs> it's possible for us to have more millionaires yeah. in the world today or in whatever locality we find ourselves. But the issue is that there are certain things that millionaires do that many people are not doing. And because they are not doing those things, they are not getting the results that millionaires are getting. Yeah. I remember reading somebody said, just find out what the poor people are doing and do the opposite if you want to be wealthy and financially successful. So what are the poor people doing? And then do what they're not doing, and you start to get the result that they're not getting. <laughs> you read that. You know, that's what I read, and, and I found that that's a reality. You know, and well, there are many formulas to building wealth. So in my own experience, I just came up with two elements to make it as easy as possible. And I, I say in my, in my postulations that it's insight and actions that lead to wealth and success. If you have the right insight, the right information, and you act upon it, the way it should be acted upon, you will get the result. And it works at any point in time. Yeah. Just get the right insight and commit to acting because wealth building is an action. It's a verb. You can't just sit down and expect wealth upon your life. Mm. So the right insights yeah. and the right information. I mean, if we go back 200 years to the United States that talked about the gold rush yeah. of 300 years ago, people knew there was gold in a certain area. And they rushed and they bought shovels and they bought wagons and they ran to those places and they got the land allocation and they dug and they found the gold. Mm. So had it been they had the information and they didn't go to those places, mm. they didn't buy the equipment, mm. they didn't get the land concessions, they would never have become wealthy. Mm. And that's what it's all about. No matter how technical it looks like, getting the right insights and acting upon it mm. will bring you wealth and financial yeah. success. And it's important also that people will say, oh, it, it, uh, where, where I am is not a place. There are successful people everywhere in the world, even in Afghanistan, even in Iraq, there are still rich people there. There are people that are making it financially. Yeah. It's not about location. Mm. It's about getting the right insights and acting upon it. And eventually, even if the insights, if you got the wrong insights or you did the wrong action, you can always repeat. Like somebody said, this is the formula, then just the next step is repeat. Yeah. Insight times actions equal to world and financial success. If it doesn't work, then repeat the process over and over again mm. and eventually, you, something will work, it yeah. will give, mm. and then we can get more millionaires, but that everybody will be a millionaire, it, it, it's, it's a hard call to yeah. say that. Yeah. And, and, you know, insights and action, and, and the action bit uh, really has my attention because 
I think there's there's something very um, relevant about uh, about the whole self discipline and uh, managing self because the notion that you know if you if you if you keep repeating a particularly a particular habit saving for example so the, the, there was a book that you recommended to me and so many other people have mentioned it to me richest man in babylon that talks about you know putting aside you know 10 percent you know and then you start building towards actually getting that that um that money or whatever it is that you've acquired and then getting it to actually work for you compound interest and all those kind of all those kind of principles etc but what that all boils down to is the action is the intent is yeah. the, discipline the discipline to do it and so the the rules and the uh, the rationale has not changed over the many many years even from those early early years it's still the same so yeah fundamentally fundamentally it is it is something that we can all do, but not everybody can do it, and actually yeah. very few people do it in, compar in comparison to the people that should be able to do it. So I mean, you are right. Um, certainly, we can't all be millionaires, but there should be more of us that yeah, are millionaires. I, for sure. I completely agree with yeah. you. Bro. We should have more people that have achieved financial success. Yeah. But just to talk a bit about that mastery. Mm. There's, you cannot achieve anything without the mastery of self. Mm. Anything you want to be, whatever it is, an athlete businessman, yeah. anything you want to be, you want to impact your world, you must discipline yourself, you yeah. must conquer self. Yeah. It first starts on the altar of self. Once you can conquer self, you have a better chance of achieving your goal. Yeah. Because you can be better focused, yeah. you can be more committed, yeah. because you have an objective you're working towards. Yeah. And athletes do it all the time. Mm. You know, top people do it all the time. Mm. So we must conquer self. Mm. And once we conquer self, because of what we are trying to achieve, you see, you must have a reason why you want to build wealth and financial success. <laughs> and that's, that ties into your discipline. Once you have a reason, for example, if my reason why is that I want to ensure that yeah. my family lives a better quality of life, yeah. or my community has a better quality of life, yeah. I have to do things intentionally yeah. to push me towards achieving that goal because yeah. of the objective. Yeah. But if my objective was just to be comfortable in yeah. life, I would do things towards just to achieve my objective. Yeah. So the bigger my objective, the bigger yeah. my dream, yeah. my goal or my focus, yeah. the more a better master of self needs to come into mm. to achieve that. Mm. It doesn't take anything to decide to be worth maybe one million. Yes. For example, if you want to be worth one billion, yes. you know you're going to have to take steps and you know position yourself in such a way where you need to make sacrifices, yeah. you may need to cut off television, yeah. you may need to cut off some associations, yeah. you may need to keep working on your dreams and your goals, you may need to keep affirming. There's so many things that come with discipline yeah. and this is where people fall short. Yeah. What we are having today is people have an entitlement mentality, Flora. Mm -hmm. People think that, oh, I can just, you know, I, I'm entitled to what I get, yeah. I'm entitled to more, but it's more than entitlement. Yeah. It takes focus, determination, and discipline yeah. to be financially yeah. successful. I, I, I loved that you, you jumped in and, and um, talked about the, the why, you know, you know, wealth to what end? Because even as you were talking about wealth, I, I was thinking to myself, well, actually, that's relative, really. Uh, wealth is relative to what, what it means to you. Um, there, you know, an individual can have a million, and they will regard themselves as well wealthy. Someone else will say, "Well, I won't be wealthy until yeah. I have two million. But at the end of the day, ultimately, what are, what are you building that wealth for? There must be a purpose to it. And of course, that's the why that you were talking about, because it is in understanding what the why is, what you want wealth to do for you, that will drive the actions and the commitment and the motivation to take the actions that will. Will, will, will get you the wealth, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. And that, and that principle could apply to, to many other things. It could apply to your career, it could apply you know, to a project, it could apply to a lot of things. You know, the desires don't tell into your goals mm -hmm. a lot, because you've got this desire for wealth, or financial yeah. success, but what are your goals? Yeah. Like somebody said, he asked the person like that, what's your goal? The person says, I'd like to have a house. Yeah. I said, okay, if I give you a dog house, would yeah. that be okay for you? <laughs> Since the dog house really? is a house. Yes. You see, so your desire, so your, your desire is on the dog house yes. level. Yes. It yes. cannot be the same as the person whose desire is to have yeah. a size skyscraper yes. or wants to build hotels yes. or buildings and lots of real estate. Yeah. So it dovetails together. So people have wrong desires or their desires are not specific. Mm. And because it's not specific and it's not clear, it's not written down, mm. it's ambiguous to a large extent. Yeah. They have problems finding their feet. Yeah. Because you see, the world. Uh, um, success responds to the people that are prepared 
and are ready for the opportunity. I love that. Uh, so Success responds to the people that are that are prepared and ready for the opportunity. Wow. Yeah. So Good if you're not ready, you have uh, there'll be a lot of challenges here and yeah. there. And when any little thing comes. Yeah. To you, that might even be success. You talked about somebody saying I have a million. Some people, if they just have food on their table, they'll say they're wealthy. I'm, I'm doing okay, yeah, uh, absolutely. Suppose I'm doing, I'm, I'm, I'm wealthy yeah, already yeah, because yeah. wealth is not your bank balance. Yes. It's a kind of a state of mind. Yes. You have a freedom to be yourself. Absolutely. And to be comfortable to enjoy absolutely. what life brings and what, yeah. has, what life has to offer. Yeah. So some people, 100,000 is enough. Mm. So some other people, 10 million is not good mm. enough. Mm. So these are the challenges. It all varies from individual to individual. Yeah, yeah. So, so um, here's here's a question for you. Okay. Self management versus technology. Which would you prefer, or technology age, should I say? Something on. Which would you prefer, and why? Well, and think of it in the context again of the around the topic of wealth, create, wealth creation. Because you see, I think I prefer in the context of wealth creation to talk about self management yeah. or maybe the basics because technology talks about improvement mm. and I'm all for technology. But there are certain basics that technology don't cannot really help you. And I give an example if you're sleeping and you have an, an alarm clock. Yeah. If it rings, you can still decide to continue sleeping. Yeah. You can put it off but and continue sleeping. You, know, you can even allow it to continue to ring. So technology has its place, it's important. It simplifies things. Mm. It helps to make you move faster. But the basics for wealth creation remain the basics, whether there's technology or there's no technology. I mean the basics of thinking about how you can create value, mm. thinking about how you can solve problems mm. with or without technology. There are certain things people need. There are certain things every community needs to put in place. There are certain problems people have that need to be solved. If you can find those problems, you can find, you can point them and flesh it out and mm. come up with a solution. You have a good chance of mm. building one, but technology can help you in the creation of a faster solution, yeah. in the creator of a faster payment yeah. system or to reach yeah. more people. With mm. technology like today, we're able to use technology to reach more people than we could have reached. Indeed. In order to do what you're doing, we'd have to be on a television station yeah. or a radio <laughs> station right now. We'd have to pay maybe lots of money yeah. or to get on board, to get studio, yeah. studio time Absolutely. and recording and other things, yeah. props and other things. But here we are doing yeah. it. That's an affordable budget. Yeah. That's what technology can do. Mm. But the desire from your side to mm. create something that can help people achieve their dreams and goals, yeah. that's back to the basic. You saw a need, you identified a need or a challenge mm. or a niche, and today mm. you're you're doing something about it. Yeah. So yeah. technology is your your vehicle, but the basics still comes from the mind, still yeah. comes from the self. Yeah. And that's why Which I said to my yeah. that the basics yeah. remain the basic, but technology helps you yeah. to push things out. Yeah. 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 Any other comments in, in uh, the role that technology, the internet particularly, uh, is, is playing in helping people build wealth for, for a purpose? And, any thoughts on how it's, it's doing that job today? Well, yeah. well the internet is... I know that! <laughs> <laughs> well, the internet is very important yeah. and um, if you check these days, lots of people have made lots of the fortune online. Yeah. So it's Come to stay. It has been a tool that has made it possible to turn the world into a true global village. Yes. And now we can sell content, we can sell information that we've been able to gather, we can create courses, we can get customers from all over the world. Yeah. We can pay, we can donate. There's so much we can do. So the internet, I still believe it's going to bring out more and more millionaires. I think in the last 10 to 20 years, it's been the medium that has brought out the most, yes. made more people rich than any yeah. other medium or business as the case yeah. may be. So the internet is completely integral and vital mm. to help more and more people achieve wealth and financial success. Mm. But that said, there are those that see the internet as a place to play and they're doing things that are not helping their cause mm. and there are quite a reasonable number of them and yeah. I think it would be good to try to educate people that this internet is not, it's a, you know, it's a tool of entertainment, it can be a tool for so many other things, yeah. but then it's also a tool for wealth creation yeah. and the more people know about that, the more they can have a chance yeah. to use it. Yeah. But Anybody, I think it was Bill Gates that said, in a couple of years' time, I'm just paraphrasing, there will be businesses that are out of business, there will be businesses on the internet, there will be two types of businesses, yeah. those on the internet and those will be out of business. <laughs> That's the way he said it, okay. that was hacked, you know? So, you need to understand that if you're not online, you're not doing something online, you're losing out on a huge, yeah, huge opportunity, opportunity. Exactly. Yeah. a huge potential. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, it's important that you must create a mix and yeah. get your business online. Yeah, so yeah. It's yeah. very important. You've mentioned Bill Gates. 
Very well said. You've mentioned Bill Gates uh, a few times now. Who, who inspires you and why? Wow, that's a great, great interesting question. I think there's quite a school of people that have inspired me, really. Um, Bill Gates is one of them. Yeah. I'm really inspired by yeah. Bill Gates. Looking at what Jeff, Be Jeff Bezos has done at Amazon, which is not such a re remarkable. Because I, I was reading something about him and I realized that Amazon, for the last 20 years, Amazon has steadily mm. increased its revenue. It has never reduced its revenue, no matter the recession. For the last 20 years, every year, their revenue is always higher than the previous year. And he's such a wealthy man. So these billionaires, as the case may be, have inspired me. And of course, a bit of uh, the influences of some clergymen here and there. I read their material on wealth creation because I believe in wealth creation is totality. I look at it from the spiritual side sometimes. Yeah. And not only look at the mental and intellectual yeah. side. There are a couple of preachers that have written some excellent books on money. Mm -hmm. And I've also read their materials, the David Uniforce, the Mike Murdochs. Uh, and a couple of others, um, I can't remember, Larry Bucket. Mm. You know, some of these guys have written lots of books on, on wealth and financial, um, financial success and have used all their materials to leverage upon. Yeah. Because I believe wealth is not just physical or intellectual. Everything is spiritual. There's yeah. a spiritual connect mm -hmm. with, with, with everything. Yeah. That said, that doesn't mean you should pray for money. <laughs> because as I said spiritual, people are going to say, oh, people are just, that means they can just be spiritual about it. The money is has different, it works on different plans. Mm -hmm. Spiritual can give you concepts and ideas, yeah. but then you need to act on the inside, yeah. you need to research. Yeah. You can't just sit down and wait for the money to yeah, fall yeah, 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 yeah. So this, if you add these plans together, then there's a good chance of mm -hmm. achieving it and, and arriving financially. Yeah, yeah. So if you were to look across two, uh, I guess, kind of age ranges, so you've got your millennials and then like your Generation X, let me, let me focus on those, so like your kind of mid-twenties to, to mid-thirties and then your mid to late thirties and then your, you know, later thirties onwards to your 55, something like that. If you were, if you had both those groups sitting in different rooms and you wanted to give each of those groups two or three tips to guide them in wealth creation as a wealth facilitator, what would you say to the millennial group? And then what would you be saying to the generation X group, given where they are generally in their lives? Well, I'd rather use stories. Yeah, I wanted right. to talk to both, both generations. If I were to talk to those that were in their late 30s, going to their 40s and 50s, I could use the story of Colonel Sanders. Mm -hmm the guy who founded KFC at the age of 65. Yeah. Colonel Sanders was an army officer and upon retirement at the age of 65, got the recipe for chicken and he started a business comfortably that today we know as Kentucky yeah. Fried Chicken. KFC, yeah. So what it means is that age is not a barrier. It's never too late to start. As long as you have an idea, you have a value, you can you see value that you can create and it's an opportunity, then you should go for it. Yeah. You can disrupt a whole industry. Mm. You can change the way things are done like KFC has done. And so the, the business has outlasted um, Colonel Sanders. Yeah, like so it's not if, if whatever your age, if someone of 65 is able to achieve, yeah. then you too can achieve. Yeah. You can build wealth and financial success that can outlast you. Mm. And so it, there's no excuse. So yeah. that would be my message yeah. to those who are older. Yeah. And of course, the millennials I use the story of Mark Zuckerberg. Or like right now, I'm reading, I'm reading about Steve Jobs. Yeah. You know, starting out even without starting out, for example, Steve Jobs started out quarreling, you know, he didn't want to go to school, he told his adopted parents, not adopted parents not to pay for, he didn't want to go to school, and he started something with Steve Wozniak, that today has outlived him, yeah. you know, so he started at a very young age, mm. and he built a multi-billion dollar company, even though he was ousted and he came back, so yeah. it means that you can, if there's opportunity, no matter your age or your educational level, seize the moment, mm. look for what's there, look for the opportunity, mm. and start building something, you yeah. know? start out young, start, it's never too early, it's never too late, you can start from where you are mm. if you see an opportunity. Mm. I know these are maybe some people might say American examples, but then it works, the concept works anywhere you are. Yeah. Look for an, an opportunity, you might start small, but look for an opportunity in your community, yeah. or look for an opportunity around you, yeah. and see what problems you can solve, and yeah. grow the number of people that you can solve problems for. Mm. So it means that the world belongs to the young people, 
this is still an opportunity, like we see with Mark Zuckerberg, mm. who went out with an idea that he thought was going to work, yeah. and he was able to leverage upon it, and it took a couple of risks. Yeah. So it's also about risk taking. Yeah. It's also about insights and taking action. So to both generations, I would say, give it your best shot. Look for the opportunities that are there. Get the right insight. Surround yourself with the right people. people yeah. And then Very go key. out there. Yeah. And to make, make it happen, but yeah. it's not impossible. If it can happen for some young person, yeah. like Mark Zuckerberg or Steve Jobs when I was very young, it can happen to you, to you as well. So it works. These principles work anywhere. Mm. It's just to the degree of how you apply yourself. Yeah, lovely. That would be my message. Great, wonderful. So I'll, I'll just let you maybe say a few things with regards to, if you've got an opportunity to talk a little bit about you know, what, you, what you want people to know about you. Um, as you kind of leave the stage here, um, your, your handles, your website, you know, what is, what is the take out that you want people to, to hold on to as, uh, as we close down on this interview today with regards to you and what you do, Ken? Okay, I think that the most important thing to share is, like I said, the formula, yeah. the fact that we can have more millionaires, more people can be successful, yeah. but it's knowledge that is missing. I like to think of it as a knowledge gap. Mm -hmm. There's a huge gap between where we are now financially mm -hmm and where we want to be in the nearest possible future. And that gap can only be bridged if we have the right insights. So Money Talk NG, which is my passion, yeah. you know, it's something that I started to help people to see how they can close that gap. Because nothing is being taught in any school. You go to any primary, secondary university, all over the world, nothing, nothing is being no, taught no. in any so, schools. It's mm -hmm. just, you're on your own. They teach you what you need to know and then <laughs> they leave you on your own yeah. to just good luck and go and see how you can make a, a success of it. So yeah. I set up Money Talk NG to help people to achieve their financial goals. And I'm also a, a very a, a passionate student about wealth and financial success. I don't know if you saw the latest story in the United States, which is very remarkable, about the billionaire, Robert Smith, who oh, went yes, to Morehouse I, College. Yes, yes. And he and now he's going to pay the uh, tuition, the debt. <laughs> The debt of 400 students amounts to around 40 million dollars. I yeah, I heard yeah, that. It was remarkable. I was listening to that on BBC, I, I think. Yeah, it was remarkable. Wow. I first heard about Morehouse on the Cosby Show because I, I remember I, I, talking about Morehouse, was one of the most prestigious black colleges in those days. Yeah. I yeah. never, you know, and yeah. I was just thinking, yeah. imagine 400 people yeah. being free from the shackles yeah. of debt. Yeah. 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 Imagine 400 people, 400 people being free to be able to 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 pursue their dreams and their goals. And I let is not the only one because some people I let Oprah were also said the same that she had also in the past mm. helped like almost for about yeah. 396 yeah. black men also yeah. pay their tuition. Yeah, yeah. So those yeah. are the kind of things. When we have resources, mm. we can really make this world a better place. Yeah. Imagine and, and, somebody. And then, yeah. There was actually one boy there, he or a young man, sorry if I said boy, a young man who had about ninety thousand dollars in debt and CNN interviewed him. His mother barely struggled to pay the debt. I mean, to pay the school fees or to go to school. And I think he's the first child. I can't remember. He's a, a very charming young man. Imagine being set free. Yeah, absolutely. Imagine, and, and you know, in, in the United States, it's a big deal to go to school. Yeah. Tuition is expensive. It's not, very, yeah. not like in Africa. It's, not, it's crazy expensive. It's expensive here as well. It's very expensive in the United <laughs> States. Because everybody has, I learned everybody has debt. You start out with debt. Yes. But here in Africa, yeah. you may not start out with well, debt. Your yeah. parents kind of cover it. Yeah. You know, so that's remarkable. So, if we all had those kind of results mm. and the kind of resources that people like Robert Smith are controlling, it will help make the world a better yeah. place. Yeah. I, I think I, I also read about... Um, That's what a wealth is. Uh, wealth creation. I think the guy, important. is it the owner of Netflix? I'm not sure. It's probably Netflix. And I think he was in the education business before. He was actually uh, an educator before he got into Netflix. Right. And uh, I know he invests a lot of, or a lot of things that he come back into Education, education well. Um, so, so yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, more millionaires and more, more people to help, you know. <laughs> the knowledge gap. Yeah, and just play it forward, play it forward. You have someone, then gap. somebody else. Exactly. Yeah. So where can you find this kind of knowledge? Is yeah. blogs like Money Talk NG yeah. and others that can help you in your quest to achieve wealth and financial yeah. success. There's a lot that many of us don't know. Mm -hmm. We claim there are many professors but few possessors. Mm. People profess and understand. That, there yeah. are many professors, people that profess to know, but mm. they, they are not possessors. Yeah. So if you're a professor and you're not a possessor, you need to know more. You need to leave the realm of being a professor to being a possessor. Mm. And for that, you need knowledge. 
and that knowledge can be found in blogs like Monitor KG and so yeah. many others, yeah. and in books, CDs yeah. and courses and yeah. materials that will help you to achieve wealth. Yeah. Like Flora said, I'm not, I'm not a, an independent financial advisor. But, yeah. I'm home, okay, I'm home, let me say I'm homeschooled and home trained. <laughs> I learned a lot of these things myself yeah. and it's working for me. Because I've used the information and you can work for anyone yeah. who uses the information yeah. correctly. Fantastic. And your, your um, social media handles, please. Okay, yes. Yeah, so I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm on um, Instagram as MoneyTalkNG, M-O-N-E-Y-T-A-L-K-N-G. I believe it'll be scrolled at, yeah. at the bottom of the screen. Mm -hmm. Also, Twitter, MoneyTalkNG, and the blog is MoneyTalkNG.com, where I share insights that will help people to achieve wealth and financial success. Right. I just wrote an article last week, I said 42 money terms you need to understand if you desire wealth. Yes. Money has its own language. Yes. You, can, you don't understand what an invoice is. You don't understand what uh, P&L. You don't understand what net profit is. You don't understand valuation. It will be hard mm. if you really want to grow wealth. Mm. Without an understanding of the language of money, mm. it may be hard. So mm. these type of articles and insights yeah. are written by Good and stuff. homeschooled. They're properly homeschooled <laughs> money gentlemen. <laughs> Can help anyone actually well. And, and you've got the certificate for that as well. Yes. Being yeah, being homeschooled. Yeah, being homeschooled. The results. Yes. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, Ken, thank you so much. I it's hope a our audience out there has really enjoyed this. This has been a headway talk, a uh, headway point, going along the lines with your money talk, a headway point yeah. production, talking about money, talking about wealth creation, wealth facilitation. It's all relative, relative to what you want to be, where you want to be. Um, in your lives as far as work is concerned, understanding how you connect your why with where it is you're going. But exactly. it's been an awesome, awesome session. Thank you so much. Um, and I know that the audience thanks you as well. So guys, um, until the next one, uh, a big thank you and, and farewell to, to Ken until the next time thanks where we so talk much, some more about uh, work. Thank, thank you, Ken. Bye, thank everyone. You. Bye. Bye.